Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher, and welcome to this week's author reading and author advice on all about Canadian books. If you missed my behind the book interview with author Robert Rotenberg, there will be a link down below and also at the end of this video because you don't want to miss him talk about his latest book downfall and he gives us some stories behind this incredible book. Robert, welcome. And can you please share with us your advice to aspiring writers? Well, I teach a lot of writing. Uh, I work with a lot of writers. I teach at the Humber School. I have a lot of private students. And what I do is I spend a huge amount of time talking about the first chapter, the first page, first paragraph, first sentence, first word. Um, so why do I do that? Because I believe that a reader and an agent and a publisher is going to decide very, very quickly if they're in or they're out of the book. So actually when I do readings, I usually read the first paragraph and then I say, are you in or are you out? So before I read the first paragraph, I want to talk about my theory about principle for the opening paragraph. You have to do a number of things when you open the book. And they're, they're kind of in conflict with each other because you have to create a character. You don't have to, but you want to create a character you care about and you want to have action. If it's only a character, it's kind of boring. If it's only action, you don't care about the character. You need to create a setting, a setting that relates to the character. You need to give the character a voice. And that's a huge thing, writing in the voice of the character. And finally, you have to have some emotional attachment to the character, because if you don't care about the character, you don't care about what's happening, um, then I don't think you're going to want to keep reading. Um, what about the opening sentence? I believe a great opening sentence, a really good opening sentence, starts in one direction and then takes an uncharacteristic or unexpected turn. And uh, if you go Google online and read, you know, the best 50, best 100 opening sentences. You're going to see so many of them do that. They start one place and they change. They go somewhere you don't expect it to go. So why is that important? Because the dynamics of that actually creates within it its own conflict and its own tension. And that tension leads readers to lead you to be more interested in it. It's more interesting than something that's flat. So just saying, Tom and Jane went to school. There's nothing interesting. Uh, so for example, the opening line of my first novel, here it is, <laughs> Old City Hall, uh, is much to the shock of his family, Mr. Singh, now the shock, what shocking thing happened to Mr. Singh rather enjoy delivering newspapers. So that, that I think is, is a good example because not exactly what you expected. Um, also rhythm is really important. When I initially wrote that sentence, I wrote much to the utter shock of his family, Mr. Singh liked delivering newspapers. Kind of boring because it, 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 there is no, it, there's no kind of da 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 da. Um, and then voice. So how do you get to the voice of a character? Well, if I said, much to the utter shock of his family, that word utter belonged to me as a writer. Mm -hmm. And you as a good reader, first of all, after four words would have thought, this is a very insecure writer. I don't really want to read this book. It's going to be lousy. <laughs> Unconsciously, but subconsciously. So I took the word utter out. So now it reads, much to the shock of his family, but just saying, rather enjoy delivering newspapers. And already you get a sense that he's this, he's an older gentleman. He grew up in India, which you find out. And he speaks that kind of British Raj kind of, oh, I rather, and then Tuesday next, and I use up his kind of language. Okay. So having said all that, um, I'm going to read the first paragraph of the new book, Downfall. Fabulous. And so the question I want you to think of when you hear this, mm -hmm. a few things. Do we have a character? 
And remember, characters are family. If we all live, so much of who we are is our family, whether it's our friends or our coworkers. Um, do we have a setting that's interesting? Um, do we care? Is there tension? Is there some suspense? And take, listen to the first sentence, which I'll read very slowly, and uh, and see if see if it makes you think. Do you have the book in front of you, by the way, Crystal? I don't. I read it on my computer, Robert. Okay. Well, the first word is because. Now, Mrs. Angus, my grade eight uh, <laughs> English teacher, said. Never start a sentence with because. It's so true. Right? Yes. But I think every word, especially every word in the beginning, you have to think, oh, because, because what? There should be a question mark behind almost every word. So when you read because, don't you want to know like because what? Yes. <laughs> because the subways in Toronto didn't run early enough, I wonder what's going to happen. Jim mm -hmm. Roshan had no choice but to ride his bicycle to work. So do we have character? Do we have setting? Do we have action? Do we have emotion? Do we have... Yeah. What do you know? Tell me about Jim right there. Is he rich? Is he poor? Yeah, poor. Okay. Yeah. Is he determined? Mm -hmm. Do you like him? I do. That's not bad for the first sentence. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Because the subways in Toronto didn't run early enough, Gemma Roshan had no choice but to ride his bicycle to work. His wife, Babita, was not pleased. In Canada, it is dark in November, and you don't even have a light, she'd said when he was getting dressed to leave. She was right, of course. But what else could he do? They needed to buy diapers for the twins, and the rent on their one bedroom apartment was due in a week. I promise that I will be careful, he told her as he was rushing out the door, but she refused to kiss him goodbye. In seven years of marriage, she'd never done that before. So are you in or are you out? I'm in. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Mission I accomplished. Know, I know it took about 50 versions to get to that. Yeah, so now I'm going back to redo my first paragraph, <laughs> have another look at it. And thank you so much for that great advice. I really appreciate it. And I'm sure there are many writers out there who will also find that very insightful. And I'll give you one last tip. When you oh. go back and look at the book, look at the last sentence of the book and see how it relates to the first sentence. Of the book. I will do that. I will do that. Okay. And also, you've got me very curious. Do you remember all of your first sentences in your books? Yeah, I think I've got them all in my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Love it. Thank you so much, Robert, for being a guest today on All About Canadian Books. Appreciate your time and your wisdom. Well, it's great you're doing this. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. It's an absolute pleasure. For writers and readers and everyone else out there, please come back next week. I have author Melissa, Marissa, excuse me, Stapley as a guest, and we'll be talking about her latest novel, Lucky. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>